Welcome everyone to Google's Get Your Business Online program. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to make your website work for you. I am Dave Meyer with Google's Get Your Business Online program. Delighted to have you with us today. I'm gonna to stop just for a moment from presenting the slide deck to give you a brief introduction and to say hello. And then I'll go through a couple of online options to show you how, to you, how you can ask questions during today's event as well. So first, here I am, so delighted to have you with us today. Um, I'm Dave Meyer, and uh, I am a national speaker and trainer for Google's Get Your Business Online program. I also run a digital marketing agency in Minneapolis called BusyWeb, and uh, that's the channel that you're on today. So if you do have questions and suggestions or things that I can help you with, um, I'm gonna show you how to chat those right now. So I am going to switch back to my screen sharing, and then I'm gonna go up to this little tabby, and then if you're live on the Hangout, and if you're watching from here, you can click on the play button right inside of this window, but it might be a little easier if you'd like to ask questions in particular, if you, would, if you were to click on this YouTube Live channel link. When you click on that link, it's gonna take you to this page, and you're gonna see this in a much bigger screen, but probably even funner you'll be able to chat and ask questions. So if you scroll down a little bit on this page, it says, say something. You need to be logged in with your Google account in order to say something or ask a question, but would love to have you ask questions here. And you do that by ask your questions here. So if you do have a specific question, I'll check back on this page a couple of times during the event today, but uh, would love to have you there. And again, you just click inside of this window, click on the big link that says YouTube Live channel, and we'd love to have you ask those questions. And hopefully this will be a helpful event for you today to help you grow your business online. All right, so let's get down to business. Today's workshop is make your website work for you. I'm gonna talk through some strategies to build or improve an existing website. Whether you've had a website for 10 years or just getting started, this workshop is going to give you the information you need to plan, create, or recreate your website to accomplish business goals. In today's competitive environments, it's more important than ever to have a business website. 79% of US consumers shop online, up from just 22% way back in 2000. But aside from just promoting products and services, websites are fantastic for creating brand visibility, providing your business with another marketing channel, driving online customers to your store, and also because potential customers have come to expect that you have one. Websites are truly the foundation of all of your other digital marketing. So no matter what you do in email, in Google, um, on social networks, or in any other form, you need to have a fantastic website because it's just table stakes now in doing business online. So here's what we're gonna talk through today. We're gonna go into, oops, I suppose I should switch back to my screen share here. That was silly. So today we're gonna talk through what is website design. And so if you think through what website design is and does and what you need to be considering. The overall template and the look and feel is what we generally attest to web design, the graphics and the layout that appear on the website. That site design is sometimes called the skin of a website, but it's just one component of how your web does or how, how your website works. Within the graphic template, there are lots of common elements that appear on most sites. And those generally include the header or the top section of the website. That's what you see up on top on this screen, home catalog, blog, contact us, FAQ. Um, there's usually a logo in the left corner and you, people expect that you can click on that to go back to the home page, and the footer or bottom section of the website. The footer usually includes important links, contact information and copyright information. Navigation is usually held horizontally across the top of the site, especially in mobile designs, and below the header or vertically on the left side of the site, and that's a little bit less popular now. But the web design needs to lay out a set of guidelines that keep the web pages looking consistent. All colors, font sizes, font styles, and types of content should be consistent and relay 
the tone of your organization and reassure people that they're still on the same page that they visited in the first place. If you're using a content management system or CMS, um, my favorite is WordPress, but there are also tools out there like Drupal, Joomla, Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, um, and dozens of others. Those options are available to you. And in general, you know, if you need to create a website and you're just getting started, um, if you want to, you can actually create a new website right through Google My Business's online profiles and look through the YouTube channel that you're browsing this on in order to see more information about Google's Get Your Business online program and specifically Google My Business. And that's available at google.com slash business. You can create a simple website for free using that tool. Now, I mentioned content management systems or CMSs, and that's a popular option for building sites because it's tough to go back to a web page and rebuild each page from scratch to add a new header, to add all kinds of other stuff. There are lots of options out there. All of them are a little bit different. What most do have in common is the ability to change or customize the overall design or theme or template all at the same time. The same principles apply whether you're creating a design from scratch using HTML, or using a pre-built template, navigating with the site that needs to be inviting and connecting and easy for visitors to use, as well as accessible by search engines and more. Website design is not the only thing that you need to be concerned with, however. I'm gonna look at six characteristics of a great website. First, your site needs to be goal-oriented. It needs to focus on what you're trying to get your visitors to do when they visit your website. A lot of clients of mine um, will confuse their website with a brochure or with something else that they're trying to accomplish or move forward. And it's not a single static thing as websites. And so you need to think about, you know, your goal for a website isn't to get the most visitors possible. It's to be a business tool to help you grow your business. So it needs to figure out how you can get additional leads if you're a business to business organization, more sales if you have an e-commerce store, um, maybe more visits or more engagements with your donors if you're a nonprofit. But you need to figure out again how your website is going to help grow your business. So have those goals in mind. It needs to be functional. It needs to do useful things. When people go to a website, they expect to be able to contact you, to dial your number with a click in a mobile device. Um, you might have a landscaping organization. And so if you have a landscape company, you might want to have something like a mulch calculator or some other tool that helps your visitors decide if they're going to work with you and that makes the process of working with you as simple as possible. This is where forms and other tools like images or videos or how-tos can come into play. It needs to be organized, and this is important not just for users, but also for search engine optimization, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but your website needs to be easy to navigate. The home is the main page of your website, but also most one of the most important web pages on your site is about us. Um, when you visit your website or when people visit your website, that's probably the second place that they're going to go to. Maybe they'll, they might also go to contact us, but make sure that you're spending a lot of time on your homepage, your about us page where you give details, how to contact your hours, that kind of stuff, as well as contact information and other things on other pages. And it needs to be consistent across all of those pages. Intuitive, your website needs to be easy to use on all devices. We're gonna talk about mobile, de mobile design in just a little bit, but you need to be able to browse that website on a phone, on a tablet, and of course on a PC. It needs to be useful. It needs to provide useful content. And I talked about this a little bit under functional, but your website needs to have information that helps your visitor do whatever you'd like them to do. And so if you're a B2B business, again, it might be that you want to connect with them and get their contact information so that you can proactively reach out to them. Well, then giving them something that they need to click or buy or do in order to get that helpful piece of 
information might be very helpful. And then, of course, your website needs to be search friendly. Search engines need to be able to find your website, and so you need to think about the back end code of that site. Your site needs to include meta titles and descriptions. It needs to have alt tags behind the images. It needs to have um, a very quick and easy to navigate um, and easy to download format. If you have lots of huge website or lots of huge images on your site, that can slow things down. And if a search engine can't crawl through your website, it's not going to rank you. So we're going to talk a lot about search engine design in a little bit. So let's talk about goal-oriented sites. Many business owners know that building a website is an important early step in their business, but a site can be a lot more useful than a business card or a brochure. With some advanced planning, you can create a site that helps your business grow right out of the gate. But how do you want to grow? Well, you need to start by defining your business's goals for that site. Ask yourself why you want a site. What do you really want it to do? The ultimate thing in most businesses and even nonprofits is they need to bring in funds. They need to make money, they need to make sales, and they need to engage. Think of your site as a tool that can help achieve your business goals. The goals for your business will depend on your particular organization, but some examples. Building a brand, so establishing your name in the local community. Generating leads if you're a business-to-business -business organization, and that's a business that does business with other businesses. Um, of course, make sales, so generate additional content if you're an e-commerce website or if you sell things on your website, that's pretty easy. But even if you're not, you might want to generate additional leads and then sales through that content. You're probably going to want to re-engage existing customers. It's 10 times easier to re-engage an existing customer than it is to find a new customer. You might want to attract employees if you're in the trades or if you're in any sort of a fields that has a competitive labor market. Um, a lot of the construction industry right now is really beset by that because it's just hard to find great people right now. And unemployment is low, and so you need to bring in fantastic employees. And then, of course, to provide support to your customers, to your employees, and there's much, much more. There's lots that your website can do. So let's think about first who you're trying to reach. What is your target audience? You need to know how these people, these ideal folks, are going to be browsing your website and what they expect from you in order to reach them. I always counsel my clients to go through and to build an audience or a marketing persona. A persona is a fictionalized version of your very best customer or probably five to ten customers. So think about what your customers have in common. And think about your very favorite customer, the one that you wish you had 10 more of today. And start identifying what are their hobbies, what are their interests? How do they act, think, and live in this life? What do they do? Identi ideally, you're going to be thinking and looking at what is that micro moment where they identify the need to work with you. And it's probably a few steps before they even try to search for you. So what are those items that they're interested in? What makes them tick? And so you need to define a narrow audience, of course, but then look through their lens to see what's going to be most engaging for them. And then, of course, you need to play matchmaker and just make sure that your website has that content that they're interested in. Once you understand their emotions, motivations, and desires, you can dig deeper and develop a complete picture of who they are, of course. And it might be demographics like their physical location. Are they in a city? Are they in a suburb? Are they rural? Um, look at their education employments, the type of employments that they have, um, their hobbies and interests, their values, and consider their view of your product or service. Is it necessary? Is it a nice to have? Or is it a special treat? Um, if you're a ice cream shop, right, that's a special treat kind of a thing. So you want to focus on the novelty and the interest inside of that. Once you have a very clear picture of your target audience and you've developed that marketing persona, it makes it much easier to generate content designed to engage for those people. 
you can almost create a inside of your persona you should give that persona a name so for example one of my organization's personas is marketing mary and we've identified all of the different kinds of things that Mary is interested in, where she hangs out online, what she does, what she needs from us in her organization. And when we write a new blog post or send a new email, we start it by saying, hey, Mary, and then just write a note to Mary. You need to find your Mary and start writing content for them. Again, what do they do for a living? Why do they have that job or what motivates them? How do they feel on a typical work day? If they had more free time, what would they do? And what would they say that your product does for them? And then you need to think about how to measure success. When you think about what you need people to do, this isn't page clicks. It isn't additional followers on your social network of choice. It's probably sales and it's probably leads if you're a business to business organization. But how do you measure those big picture, capital G goals? I wanna make more money, of course, I'm in a business. I wanna get um, more engagement and interaction with my donors as a nonprofit. So how do you measure those items? You need to think a few steps backward in the engagement process or in that funnel. And so it might be tracking the amount of phone calls that you receive or the form, form submissions that people submit on your website. They go to your page and they fill out a form saying, yes, I'm interested in this piece of content, or yes, I wanna contact you, or yes, I wanna attend your event. Tracking online sales is a no-brainer, of course, but then really measuring engagement, how many pages people visit on your site. Notice I'm not saying how many visits to your website, I'm saying how deep people go on your site. A great metric is the bounce rate, and you're not going to hear anything else about bounce rate this this um, session, so I want to talk about it for a second. But a bounce rate is the likelihood that someone's going to visit your website and then bounce right back off. They're going to leave without doing anything else on your site. So if you have a high bounce rate, if 85 or 95 percent of people that go to your website leave that website without doing anything else, you're probably not giving them enough interaction, or what they're expecting on your website isn't matching their reality. So they thought they were gonna go there to download a form, but instead you hit them with some sort of a sales message and it's too early in the process to engage them in sales, they're gonna bounce off. So you need to figure out ways to engage them a little deeper. So as you think about this and your future of your website, be very specific on what you want to accomplish. I want 10% more online orders in the next month for my organization via the website. You need to be realistic. I didn't say I want $5 million more to come into my business in the next three days, unless of course you're a humongous site, but you need to be realistic. What can you actually accomplish? What can you achieve? And then again, how can you track and measure success? If you're not measuring, you're not marketing. And so make sure that you're putting a stake in the ground, making a line in the sand, and then measuring how far forward you're moving. And sometimes you might not move forward very far, and that's okay. The point is with every engagement, with every change to your website, you need to make sure that you're doing something. And if you move backwards, well, that's something that you don't want to do anymore. So you can just turn the page on what you're doing and focus on something new. Super easy. All right, so now that we've talked about the goals and tips on choosing your website design and how you're gonna interact, let's talk about the information inside of your website. Your site needs to be well organized. Even if you don't have a lot of web pages now, your site will and should grow over time. Planning how existing and future content will fit into the framework of your site is going to serve you very well. You may have heard the term information architecture, or IA. Sounds kind of technical and geeky, but you don't need to be a web designer, programmer, or an information architect to create one. Simply put, it's a plan to organize information on your website. The IA maps out the sections, pages, and functionality of your site. There are several pages and sections on most websites, including the About Us page, the Home page, probably a contact page, if you have products or services, 
you want to focus on what those products and services are. And depending on your business, you're probably going to have a number of these types of content. You don't want to offer too much too soon. And I had a client, for example, that was a um, social media company and they wanted to have everything on their homepage because they wanted to be able to just visit. They wanted their clients to be able to visit that page and never have to click again to be able to browse things. You know, so you go there, but they had like 17 different services. So they had 17 links off of their homepage with too much information on any one given page. The likelihood that your visitor is going to take any actual next step goes down dramatically. So make sure that you have one thing or maybe two or three things max per page that you're, that you're asking people to do. Your homepage is a little bit different. You can think of it as the menu or the roadmap on how to get people to everything else that they need. But you don't want to focus on or give people too much interaction or, in, or information on that homepage because if, if they see too much, they might suffer from information overload or analysis paralysis and simply go away or bounce off of your site. So here's a few tips to get started on organization. When you're choosing names and labels for parts of your site, keep those labels short and descriptive. Think about what people are going to be typing into their Google Web's web browser or into their search engine to find your information. As you create your website plan, remember to keep the most important information in the main navigation up on top. That depends on your business, of course, and your business goals. Your plan can help you create and select the most appropriate site design or template. To get started, define the target audience. We already did that earlier. And if you have any new ideas, now's the time to add them. What do they want people, what do you want people to take away from your website? What do you want them to know when they visit your page? And you can ask your existing customers what they want. So you can have a pop-up or a form, or you can do many focus groups with your best customers and say, you know, check out our site or check out this template or this idea that I have. Does this match your needs? Make a list of keywords related to your business. Incorporate those keywords into the navigation, organization, and content. Keywords are simply the phrases that people will type in to their search engine when they want to find you. Your job in order to optimize, and we're gonna talk about SEO in a little bit, but your job to optimize your website for search engines is to make sure that your website has the content on it that people are typing in search engines. So use a list of keywords to keep your site content um, relevant. You might wanna also consider co colors, icons, imagery and other goals. Make a list of information and features that you have or want to have on your site and how they will help you reach your business goals. So again, who's your audience? What are their needs? And how can you organize your site to help your audience get what they want? Talked a little bit about goals and organization. Now let's get closer to building that site. The next thing you need to consider is relevant content and experiences for your users. When we talk about content, the first thing that probably, probably comes to mind is text, the words in a book or the, the text on a page. That's one type of content, but that's not all I mean. If you sell beautiful cakes, you might want to add a photo gallery section of those cakes. If you deliver mulch to residential customers, you might want to add a video that shows people how to measure a flower bed to help them order the right amount. If you sell cameras, you might want to add PDFs of product manuals so your customers can download that information if they misplace the print manual. What kinds of content would be useful to your target audience? What content would support your business goals to get them to the next step in your sales process? Whenever possible, create original and unique content. This will set your business apart from the competition and also help you to rank much higher in your search engine results because if content is duplicated across the web or if you just copy and paste um, from other sites on the, on the web or subscribe to some sort of a service that develops content across, for example, all chiropractors, there's nothing to make your website stand out. So making your website useful is more than text. It's about value for someone based on your shared history with them. 
That does include text, but also images and videos. 61% of consumers expect brands to tailor experiences based on their preferences, but only from data that is intentionally shared with the brand, such as purchase history, favorite items, saved items, previous searches, or site visits. Nearly nine out of 10 times when people had a use or helpful or relevant mobile experience, they said they would purchase from a brand in the future. People expect brands and companies to provide them with relevant experiences. We're living in a time when mobile experiences matter more than brand loyalty and providing irrelevant content to visitors can have a big impact on the bounce rate of your website. So when you have relevant experience and information designed for mobile devices, because out of the over a trillion searches that were completed on Google last year, more than 60% of those were developed or were made on mobile devices. So your content needs to look great on a small device. Ideally, your site needs to lead the mobile user from one page of useful content to the next until they finally convert into whatever you want them to do. Building personalized experiences starts with good data. Spend time with your user data, site analytics, to find opportunities to customize experiences for users that drive additional value. To remedy a high bounce rate and misalignment between your visitors and your website's content, examine in detail your visitors' interaction with your pages, the nature of your traffic, who they are, and why those visitors are arriving on your pages. Segmenting your website traffic can help you identify who is finding your page content useful and who doesn't. Look for useful ways to segment your users. Rather than designing one experience for everyone or the average user, look for distinct groups that might have different wants, pain points, or behaviors. To get started with analytics, you can visit marketingplatform.google.com. That's marketingplatform, all one word, .google.com. Let's check out another aspect of your site functionality to get your content engaging and to help engage your users more. First, what do I mean by functionality? Functionality is really the things that allow site visitors to take some specific action on your website. When people go to your site, they don't just go to enjoy the experience of checking out your images or connecting with you or basking in your glory. They want information. They want to know that you can solve their needs as quickly as possible. So on mobile especially, people expect to have a site search. When you visit someone, someone's website on your mobile device, you probably look right away and instead of browsing all over the place, you just click on the search box inside of that navigation, type what you're looking for and hope for the best, right? So having a site search is incredibly important. An online form or several forms can be a simple and easy way to connect and engage with people on your website. So you need to make that form simple and easy because people are probably typing in information on that form with two thumbs on a mobile device. So have multiple choice answers instead of asking for long text information. So have that online form. If you sell products or services, of course, an online store, and then make sure that that online store experience is as simple and as seamless as possible. This is where having the ability to purchase products and services right on your website, instead of having to bounce out to visit PayPal, for example, and authorize and then go back, or offering too many questions or information, or five if you have a five-click purchase process, that's probably too much, or perhaps an online tool. Like, for example, with our landscape friend to have a mulch calculator on that page that allows them to go and measure their weed or measure their flower bed, measure how deep they want it, and then decide how many yards they need to order. So here's three three functionality lens or three functionality scenarios. First, our landscape company, they delivers they deliver mulch. Customers don't know how much to order, so let's create a mulch calculator. Customers enter the dimensions and the depth, and the calculator tells them how many yards they need to order. Or you start a hair salon, and you don't have anyone to answer phones and schedule appointments. Well, an online form to help book those appointments, and that maybe finds the openings for your team, 
and schedules those appointments would be a very helpful tool. Or let's say your bakery makes a wedding cake or makes wedding cakes. People call and ask the same questions every day about the price and the delivery. Well, having a frequently asked questions page on your site would help to solve those basic questions, reduce the amount of calls that come in, and get them right to the information that they need in the first place. So we've covered some big picture topics, goals, audience, and measurement. Let's move on to the actual site. This section's focused on design, but not simply how pretty your site looks, although of course an appealing design is important. This section is focused on how intuitive your website is. In other words, does your site naturally lead visitors through a process to accomplish the goals that you've laid out for your site? Here's another way to think about it. Visitors should not have to think about or struggle to find what they're looking for or do what they want on your site. Where's Waldo is a fun game, but your website is not Where's Waldo. The design of your site can have a big impact on whether your site helps you reach your goals. Here's a few things to consider when building a great experience for your site visitors. A reminder, mobile. Did you know that more than 50% of all web traffic is now coming from smartphones and tablets? With the advancement of mobile devices, consumers have come to expect easy and frictionless experiences across every interaction they have with your business. 46% of people say they would not purchase from a brand again if they had an interruptive mobile experience, which is a nice way of saying that your mobile site stinks. The good news, more and more, websites are being built from the start with technology that automatically optimizes your site format to best fit the device that it's being viewed on. Responsive web design adjusts the, site uh, the site's appearance to best present the information based on the screen and type of device. Are you holding your phone horizontally or vertically? Is it a four inch screen or is it a 15 inch mega laptop? Your site design should automatically change to match that experience. First, you wanna make your site easy to use. And you can do this by highlighting the elements that are selected. For example, when choosing options on an e-commerce store. Designing your site to allow plenty of space for users to tap with their thumbs so they don't end up frustrated making the wrong selections. Ensure that the call to action can be tapped to make the process of converting as easy as possible. This is a great reason to have buttons on your page. In this example, you know, discovery signature collection, learn more. I would love to have that as a button, but it's kind of all in a big button, right? And then you can filter by or sort by specific items. This example is Patricia Nash Designs. It's great and it's clickable in that learn more functionality in the upper right and filter options to make it super easy to find more information. See that big search button? That's wonderful. Next, make it easy for customers to shop and to continue shopping and or come back to an earlier page to ensure that they come back to the site after a break. Example business here is Fairbowl Wooden Mill Company, added because the helpful added to cart link will allow them to continue shopping. It's not destructive, right? So you can add to cart or continue shopping. You can keep on going. You can select the colors very easily and the content, the product details are right on that one page. Third, make it easier for visitors to check out and pay on mobile devices. If you've ever visited a website and tried to check out only to have difficulty entering your credit card information, um, it's frustrating, right? So having a difficult checkout process can have a major impact on your conversion rate. Some things to help. First, reduce the number of steps in your checkout process. Show visitors progress as they move through the checkout process that lets them know they're just about done or use guest checkouts so visitors don't have to sign up to purchase. Just make sure to offer them a sign up to save their profile information for next time. And finally, you can enable digital wallets such as Google Pay or Apple Pay for a completely frictionless experience. This example, Janus Motorcycles, has, has a clear creak out that shows customers their progress and next steps. So one, two, three, four, five. Last but not least, and maybe most importantly, a great website is search friendly. After all, if you made the time, effort, and expense to plan and create your website, 
you'll want to make sure that potential customers can find you when they search online. The process of helping a website increase its visibility on search engines is called search engine optimization or SEO. There's an entire presentation that I could give on SEO, but this section is going to give you top level tips to get you off to a good start. Imagine that the web is a book with trillions of pages. Google's job is to read that book, categorize the pages, and help searchers find the information on these pages. Easy, right? To read those pages, Google uses software called robots or web crawlers or spiders. As new pages are found, they're added to Google's index. The data in this index is stored in facilities called data centers. When people search, results are shown are pulled from the data stored in those centers. And when you start your search, Google's algorithm starts the process of finding those results. An algorithm looks at the word or phrase that you typed and uses over 200 signals to identify the most relevant results. Examples of these signals could include the freshness of content on a website, how recent that website was updated, the number of other sites linking to a particular site, and the authority of those pages, how trustable they are, quality of the content on the site, the URL or the web address and page title, and finally, whether the result is a web page, an image, a video, a news article, etc. After all that, the searcher will see a page like this, a search results page. At the top, you see a word or phrase that the searcher typed in. It's called a search query. Below the search query, you see the search results. The page can include ads, identified with a little green ad label. And below the text ad in this example, you see the start of natural or organic search results. Organic search results are those that you don't pay for. Creating a search engine friendly site helps increase your chances of appearing on this organic results area of the page. Organic results are pages that Google's algorithm has identified as the most useful matches for this particular search based on those 200 different things. It's important to note that websites can't pay Google to appear in organic results, and advertising does not influence a website's organic presence or position. On the right sidebar, you also see a section that provides useful information for the searcher. This is called a Google My Business listing. It's a free tool that helps you add your business information on Google Search and on Google Maps. Again, there's an entire presentation in this, and so look back through the Busy Web archives um, and on our YouTube channel because we have an entire presentation on how Google My Business works. If you have a local business that you want people to stop by at, Google My Business is an essential part of your marketing mix. Here's a few tips specific to building a website that can help optimize it for best results. First, you need to have a fast website. Optimizing that load time, especially for people viewing, viewing your site on mobile devices and perhaps over a 3G network, is very important. You need to have original and useful content that needs to be information rich, clear, and accurate. Include keywords on pages and titles that users would type to find your pages and make sure that your site actually includes those words and actions around those words. For links, especially in the navigation, use text when possible. If it's an image, make sure to include the relevant alt tag. An alt tag is a label that you give in the back end of your website to tell Google and assistive devices what those images are. Good page titles and descriptions will ensure that your content is as descriptive, specific, and accurate as possible. And a page title tells Google what to show up in the blue text. If I go back a link here, um, Stages Bakery, the ultimate celebration cakes, stagesbakery.com is the title. The description right underneath that, we ship everywhere, call us today, that is the meta description. So good page titles and descriptions will tell Google how to display your information when you do show up as a match for people's keywords. Great information architecture, as we covered before, not only helps your human visitors, it helps Google interpret the content, including what's important and what's less important on your website. And finally, 
design your site for all browsers, device types, and sizes, including desktops, tablets, and smartphones. You've heard about this before from me, but mobile responsive design is incredibly important. So I covered a lot today. Let's talk about what you should do next. First, start by making a list of business goals that you want to support with your site. If you're building a new site, choose a design that works on all browsers and devices. If you've had your site for a while, see how it performs on all devices, especially mobile. There is a mobile-friendly test that you can do, and just Google mobile-friendly test um, in order to get this, but it will show you how well optimized your website is, including how fast it is and ways that you could improve that mobile experience. Third, create or recreate a plan for your content, your website's information architecture. Organization of your content will help human visitors and search engines navigate your website more easily. Once you have your plan, start adding that content. The more often you can publish useful and original content on your site, the better. And think about how your site can offer functionality that supports your business goals. Before you invest the time and resources to building a custom tool, look around to see if existing software can be bought or licensed for your site. This is one of the reasons that I really love WordPress as a tool, because there are plugins for almost anything under the sun. Finally, make sure that your website is search engine friendly. If search engines can't find your site, neither can your customers. If you want to learn more, there's lots more and much more in-depth content in small little bite-sized chunks at gybo.com lessons. These fast, easy lessons cover take about five minutes each to complete and can help you learn more about online marketing whenever you have a few minutes to spare. There's also a handy little app that you can download for Android and Apple devices. And so check that out if you have a moment and you will not regret it. There are also much bigger and more in-depth versions of search engine optimization and the Google My Business information, um, including Google My Business pages, on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. On behalf of the entire GYBO team at Google, I wish you great success in growing your business online. I'm gonna switch back very quickly to make sure that we don't have a question or two. Um, let's see what we've got here. Success in growing your business online. We'll, we'll pause that. Make sure that we don't have and a... I'll actually mute that. <laughs> Looks like we don't have any questions. So if you do have specific things that you would like, there's a contact button on the page um, inside of this screen. So if you go inside back to this one, I'll go back here. Again, this suspends my Chrome tabs. Um, the Great Suspender actually is a fantastic tool if you browse and keep a lot of tabs open at one time. Um, you can connect with me by clicking on the contact button right up here. And again, Feel free to ask those questions, but hope this was helpful and that you found a lot of helpful information to help you grow your business online. Again, I am Dave Meyer, and thank you so much for hanging out with me here. I'm going to stop presentation and uh, just wave you off and say thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Hope this was as useful to you as it was fun for me, and we'll see you next time. Check out the screen up at the top of the busy web page for the next events because we have a lot of helpful information um, every other week we actually post a live online seminar just like this talk to you soon and remember with google we can help you get your business online